from the National Weather Service in Indianapolis. We service this particular area that you are in right now. You are on the northwest side of our warning, uh, warning uh, county warning area. And so what we wanted to just come up and talk about is some of the things that you all have already been looking at, the no November 17, 2013 uh, severe weather outbreak. Um, this is actually one of the tornadoes, one of the tornadoes that went through Lebanon, Indiana. Um, I think if you remember, that was the one that hit that Starbucks right off of the highway. Um, I love, 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 love this picture on the left. Can anybody tell me what you think these red and blue polygons are? Oh yeah, I like to ask a lot of questions. Um, so I like to get a lot of interaction. And so if you, if you know the answer, let me know. You may get a special yes, ma'am. What, what warnings and severe thunderstorms. Yes. So that's precisely. <laughs> she's like, stop talking. So that's precisely what they are. And what I love about it, and I guess I shouldn't love it about it because there was damage in it. But what I love about it is you can't really tell where Indiana is. There were so many warnings that particular day, especially clustered across the portion of the state that we're in right now. So our role um, in, in what we do at the National Weather Service, our mission statement is protection of life and property. Everything that we do is geared towards that. Um, preparedness, uh, there's, there's really not much more we can say about being prepared. Being prepared is of the utmost um, um, importance when it comes to severe weather, winter weather. Uh, you wanna know how to keep yourself safe and when to put your plan into motion. So to be prepared, you have to have a forecast. You have to know what's coming. Not everybody out here is a meteorologist. Am I right? Yes. Thank you, sir. I like your burgundy sweater. And then decision support services is something else that we do from the National Weather Service. That is um, providing our partners, EMs, emergency managers, the media, uh, you name it, providing them specialized information for their county so that they know what's coming uh, to see them. Watches and warnings on that day. Um, there were a number of watches and warnings as you saw earlier on the map that was issued out of our office. So those watches and warnings don't come out without proper staffing in our office. Normal staffing is uh, two meteorologists, one uh, intern, meteorological intern or hydromet tech, um, and, then, uh, and then management if it's on the, uh, during the week. If it's on the weekend, which if I'm not mistaken, November the 17th was a Sunday, um, staffing became a real problem. Um, and so what we like to do at the Weather Service is to staff ahead of time. We'll talk about some post-event things. Um, you still have to forecast after the storm has gone through, there are still dangers. And we'll talk about some of those a little bit later on and also get into some of the damage surveys that we did that day. As I mentioned before, protection of life and property is what we're here for. Indiana, just like any other state in the United States, is prone to severe weather of all kinds of, as we've seen from tornado, hail, severe wind, flooding, um, strong winter weather. So that's why protection of life and property and everything that we do preparedness wise is geared to that statement alone. Um, we cover 39 counties here in central Indiana from um, all the way up here in, in further in Warren County, all the way over to Randolph County, down towards Knox and Jennings. Uh, as I mentioned before, National Weather Service, they are really pushing what's called the Weather Ready Nation Initiative. And so um, what that is aiming to do is to help provide communities better resiliency when it comes to these type of events, helping to get them prepared and respond to these, uh, to these tragic and, and, and uh, eventful um, storms. So what is it? Becoming weather ready is about building community resilience, as I mentioned earlier, in the face of increasing vulnerability to extreme weather. There are a number of different agencies that go into that. It's not just your local National Weather Service office issuing warnings. You have, uh, you have some other national offices, such as your, your Hurricane Center, the Storm Prediction Center down in Norman, Oklahoma, they're the ones that, that issue your uh, uh, tornado and severe thunderstorm watches. Um, two other, other entities that create computer models for us to look at to help forecast the event um, to some of the uh, emergency alerts that you now get on your phone when there's hazardous weather in your area as well. 
Um, so it's not just the National Weather Service. There's a bunch of different agencies working together to help people become prepared and respond. So starting with, uh, with some of the things that come out of our office forecast-wise, we issue a forecast. The forecast, you may hear it on, if you have, how many of y'all got a weather radio? I didn't think so. Weather radio is kind of going by the wayside. Everybody has their cell phones. You're getting warnings on your cell phones now. I get it. Um, but we issue a forecast. You can go on our website. You'll see the, 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 the graphics at the top, and you'll have a seven-day forecast underneath there. You're wondering, well, how in the world do we create that forecast? Well, we have what's called a graphical forecast editor. You didn't know that being a meteorologist meant you also had to be an artist. So we essentially draw our forecast. And then there's something that runs that produces our seven-day forecast. And so um, we write a text discussion on what we think is going on. So our area forecast discussion is kind of a more technical um, form of what we believe is going to happen. Hazardous weather outlook is uh, more focused on some of the hazards that we're expecting throughout that seven day time frame. The day one is the most detailed of all of them. They talk about the outlook, the hazards, timing when we expect those hazards to come through and whether or not uh, we'll see spotter activation, that's down further at the bottom. And then days two through seven, you pretty much just get a discussion, but the discussion does go into detail about what we think will occur during that time frame as well. Hey Mark, where could they find all that stuff? They can find all that information on weather.gov forward slash IND. This also on our website is our weather story. It is our most visible graphic that we have. Um, unfortunately, I did not have the one from November 17th, so I took the most recent severe weather possibility that we had in our area, which was December the, the 23rd, um, 2015. And if you remember, we actually did have, was it two or three uh, brief tornadoes that day? The 23rd? The 23rd. I think we had three. Three brief tornadoes that day. This came out uh, a day or two ahead of time out of our office detailing where the Storm Prediction Center thought we were going to see severe weather with the slight risk uh, of north and the enhanced risk down south. Um, the weather story is a real quick way for you to go to our website, click on it, and just get a quick idea of what we think is the most impactful weather over the next seven days. And so that's why it's typically our most visible product. We send it out via Facebook, via Twitter. Um, so if you, if you have your phones with you now, I don't mind if you use them, go like us on, on, on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, you'll get a lot of great information from us. As I mentioned before, not just our office trying to help keep people safe. Storm Prediction Center, they issue um, severe weather risk at the time, uh, back in, in 2013, they only issue three types of risk, the slight, moderate, and the high risk. This is actually from that day, denoting most of Indiana in a high risk for severe weather, uh, primarily for tornado and strong uh, damaging straight line winds. Um, so when we see this at the office, this gives us an idea, okay, we know what we're thinking, we're going through the models and we get an idea, hey, severe weather is going to occur that day. Does it match up with what some of the experts are thinking down at the Storm Prediction Center as well? And so really for us, this is another piece of guidance for us to use. While we're looking at computer models, we're formulating our own thoughts, the Storm Prediction Center will also give us an idea of what they're thinking for the particular day as well. So just to give you an idea of how they evolve their, uh, their outlooks, day five. Who knows that typically as you get closer to events, the computer models help to get, the, the forecast models get a little bit better, um, better organized. And, and this is a clear depiction of that, because notice this is where the, the, the Storm Prediction Center had their risk at day five, day four, they expanded it northeastward. As they go along, the day three severe was across our area, expanded it westward, day two, day one tornado, uh, probability 30% pretty much bullseyed right on us here. And then 
this is what actually happened that day. I'm blocking you guys. I just realized that the whole time I'm talking. Okay, good. So, the, uh, the red dots are tornado. The blue dots are your strong straight line winds. And there's a couple of green dots there that are uh, hail reports as well. But notice how the forecast got better with time. Uh, the, the, the closer we got to an event, the better Storm Prediction Center did in forecasting where they thought the most impactful weather was going to be. The day before, Saturday, out of our office, we issued what was called a multimedia web briefing um, at around 11 o'clock. So essentially what that was is we used Camtasia, we put together a presentation, and then we just talk, talk about what we think is going to occur with this particular event. Typically two to three minutes in duration because as we've kind of noticed, two to three minutes is about all that people will give you when it comes to watching the video. Um, nobody really wants to sit through a five, six minute plus video, am I right? Yes. You're gonna be my favorite. I like that guy. Um, after, after we issued the multimedia web briefing, did a conference call with emergency managers, as I mentioned before, some of the DSS or, or IDSS impact decision services. Um, did a conference call with some of the emergency managers and the media so that we can all kind of get on the same page uh, we can kind of tell them what we think is going to occur, what's going to occur for their particular area, um, and talk about timing, threats, and hazards. That's what they want to know about. Um, they really don't want to hear that we have a strong upper level trough coming across the Midwest. They don't want to hear all of that. They want to hear what's going to happen in our area and when is it going to happen. And then we leave some time for questions. Um, that can get a little bit hairy because every emergency manager then wants to rehash everything we just said asking, well, what's going to happen in my county? When is it going to hit my county? And so that's why we really harp on the timing um, as it moves through, uh, moves through our counties. And then social media, we continue to blitz out the, uh, the weather story, uh, a number of other products just telling folks, hey, be prepared. This is coming. Um, so that folks can start to make a plan now as opposed to later. 